So True Story is a platform for users to authenticate and validate claims um, or stories. And stories are um, things that people or a company is saying in their white paper, blog post, website, social media, whatever it is. The problem we're trying to solve is the amount of disinformation and inauthenticity there is in the space and just kind of providing a truth layer to claims that people are making. What we're using the blockchain for is the social economic validation game. So it's a token-based, stake-based betting game and so the blockchain is useful for obviously the token part of it. And secondly, um, we use the blockchain to kind of uh, store the outcome of the validation game so that there's permanence on what's been validated and what's not been validated so that in the future smart contracts can automatically verify the authenticity of these stories. When we move to a more and more decentralized world, there's no central authority to kind of keep tabs on what's authentic and what's not, what's honest and what's not. And so people kind of are very liberated to do whatever they want and say whatever they want. And if they're good enough, they can say whatever they want and make money off of it. In True Story, every time you create a story or a claim, um, you have to back that claim with a certain amount of tokens. And if that claim doesn't get validated, you lose that stake. That's one. Two, the validation happens in a stake-based betting manner where people are voting for whether they believe that your story is trustworthy or not. And if they fall on the, the losing side, then they lose their tokens. And so you lose tokens for being a bad validator and you win tokens for being a good validator over time. And so for you to le keep lying and create false claims over and over again, it gets very expensive because people are gonna try to prove you false because they can earn money for proving you false. What the Ethereum community has done really well is it, it really welcomes newcomers um, in, a, in a much better way than other communities I've noticed, at least in the blockchain space. And so if you're a newcomer, you're not like shoved at the door or like people are actually like very welcoming into the space. And that's what I love about being connected to the Ethereum community. And like for me, I became so passionate about the community and they just kind of like welcomed me into the community. And so it was hard for me to even like leave after that, impossible. When you come to conferences like this, you bump into developers who are working on really interesting stuff, and then that's how you stay abreast on the ecosystem. There was a parody hack um, six months ago, and what happened in the hack was a library got destroyed because someone was able to become make himself an owner of it and destroy it because the wallet wasn't initialized properly. Because of that, hundreds of wallets were locked and basically like over 500,000 Ethereum were just like locked out. People were locked out of their funds. And there were multiple attempts at trying to recover these funds. And so my talk will talk about um, what, are, what are the attempts that have been taken so far to try to recover these? Kind of taking a step back from that as well and, and figuring out like EIP-999 has created so much like heat and debate in the ecosystem and actually taking a look at why that is and how we can make future hard forks like this less cumbersome, less time consuming so that we don't get stagnated off these types of hard fork decisions.